8th grade, it's Miss Hartmeyer, and we are back again for some fun recorder practice. And we are going to be learning the note G. So make sure that you have your recorder on your lanyard. You also need to make sure that you have your book, your pencil, and even some water. Something else that's going to be really helpful to have today is something to mark your left hand. We talked about putting our left hand on top when we were in class, but it's easier said than done. So I usually use my watch, but in your case, you might have if you have one of these cool bracelets laying around or even something to just put a little dot on your left hand that'll help you when you're playing the recorder. So make sure that you have all of those things ready and we're going to get set playing something really fun learning the note G and if you look in your book on page number four we actually have a fingering chart for G so if we look down here you can see that G is the second line on the staff and we also can look over here to see what fingers we need to press down and when so it looks like we have our thumb on the back and then three down the front so let's try to do that on our instrument Remember that we always put our left hand on top. So our thumb is going to go on the back. Our first finger is going to come down. And if you remember that, that was the note B. The next thing that should happen is our second finger is going to come down. And that was the note A. The third one is going to come down. And this one is going to be G. So make sure that you have the right fingering on your recorder. If you're unsure, make sure to check it in a mirror. Or even have a buddy around the house check it with you. So another thing that we want to make sure that we do is to cover up all of those holes. Make sure that we're not using the tips of our fingers, right? Because that's going to make us not cover all of the holes completely. So we want to use the flatter, fatter part of our fingers to make sure that those holes are nice and covered. So if you're unsure, you can always press just a little harder and then you'll come up with these little circles on your fingers. And those don't hurt. They just mean that you're pressing a little bit harder so you can see where the hole is laying on your hand. So check it and make sure, but let's play our G together. One, two, ready, play. Awesome. Did you sit up nice and tall as we played G? Make sure that you're sitting up nice and tall and remember we don't need to use a lot of air. Let's try that again. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. If your G sounded like mine, then you were right on track. If your G sounded a little higher than mine, like this, then we're using too much air and we need to back that down a little bit. So the next thing is if your G sounded a little crazy or funky, then maybe we need to check to make sure that we've got all of these holes covered. One of the biggest tendencies is for our fingers to kind of scrunch together like that or even just skew off. So you can actually see, I'm not covering the entire first hole here. So make sure that you're checking to make sure that all of those holes are covered. If they're not, they're gonna leak a little bit like this. Do you hear how it has that kind of squeaky sound? That means that we're not covering up all of the holes. So let's try our G one more time. One, two, ready, go. Excellent job. Turn to page six of your book, and on page six, you're going to see an exercise that says G at the top of it with a giraffe. So we're going to clap that exercise together, and we're only going to clap it one time, even though they have that funky dot thing at the end, which means that we repeat. That's called our repeat sign. So let's clap it just one time. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Excellent. So this time I'm going to play the first time and then I want you to echo me for the second time. Ready to try it? All right. One, two, ready, and.
Excellent. Our book, we also have another exercise called More G's and has even more giraffes above it. So this one also has that repeat sign at the end, but remember we're only gonna clap it one time together. So let's clap more G's together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. How'd you do? Awesome. I'm gonna play the first time, I want you to play the second time. Remember that when we use our tongue at the top of our mouth going t, that's gonna help us show each different note, okay? Because otherwise we're gonna sound like we're hoing. We wanna show that we have control over that note. So we're gonna use our tongue hitting the roof of our mouth saying the word two, right? So t for each note. I'll play the first time, you can play the second time. One, two, ready, go. Excellent. So the next step is going to be adding the notes B, A, and G together because we don't just play one song and one note in the whole entire song. That would make it really boring. So let's work on playing B, A, and G in the same exercise. We have an exercise called B, A, and G. So the first thing that we want to do is we wanna make sure that we're playing all the right notes. And one way to help us start that is by writing in at the bottom. So the first note that we play is on the third line of the staff. Which note is that? Do you remember? That's right, it's B. So the first two notes are actually B. Actually, the first three notes are B. So when I write that in my book, I'm going to write them below, just like this. It's always best to use a pencil because that way you can erase them later when you get really good at this. So the next line, or well, the next measure, has a note on the second space. Remember when we're using our spaces, we use base. So the second space would be A, that's right. So our next two notes are A, A, oh, and even the third one is A. Excellent. So now I look like this. Let's finish up this exercise together. So the next two measures look like they're the same note, which is a good thing. So it's on the second line, and remember, every good, right? So that would be G. And we're going to write in those G's in our book. So now that I'm done, I can set my pencil down and I can take a look to make sure I've got all the right notes written in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clap the rhythm so that way I know what it is. And I hope that you'll clap it with me. So I'm also going to say the letter names of the notes as we go, so that way I can remember it in my brain. I hope that you'll do that with me. Let's try it together. One, two, ready, go. B, 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 A, 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 G, 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 G. Excellent. So remember, we want to hold out those whole notes for the full value. Okay? So I've got my recorder handy. The first note I start out with is B. So now I'm going to say the letter names of the notes in rhythm as I finger along with the notes that I'm saying. So let's try that. One, two, ready, go. B, B. B, two, three, four, A, 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 two, three, four, G, G, 
G, two, three, four. Anytime you need to go back and practice this, you're more than welcome. So let's try playing this exercise together. One, two, ready, go. Awesome job. Hopefully you did really well with that. You can go back and practice anytime that you like. So for now, practice using B, A, and G together in a song of your choosing. A really great way is remember last week when we made this exercise and we had our B's and our A's in different forms, but we used quarter notes? You can do that with B, A, and G now. So this is an example. I'm going to put two B's, an A, and a G, just like our exercise did. But this time I'm going to play them as quarter notes. So if I played that exercise, it would sound like this. You can even change up the rhythms or even the pattern of notes and ask maybe a partner or a buddy that's around you to pick a different combination when you're out of ideas. So check back for the next video when we talk about hot cross buns. See you later.